Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I hope you guys had a wonderful and restful weekend. And most importantly, I hope that you are all keeping your heads above water. I know we're all struggling to make ends meet in the current market. And it's not surprising that one of the most common questions I get from you guys via email is when in the world will this market get better? This is the question on everybody's mind right now. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I teach about the trucking industry with a heavy focus on the spot market as well as freight market analysis. So if this is a topic that interests you, feel free to subscribe down below. Now, over the past week, as I mentioned in the previous videos, I have been working solely with the flatbeds. But in the past few days, I have started working with our reefers as well. And let me tell you, it's brutal. So I completely understand the concern, the panic, I get it. And while I can't definitively answer the question of when the market will get better, because there are so many outside factors that have to happen or that can happen for the market to turn around, what I can do is provide some context and some historical data to at least help you understand how we got here and where we are currently to try to understand where we will be going in the future. Ready? Let's go. Okay, so first let's do a rundown of how the freight market actually ended up in such a ditch. So we have a chart, five-year chart here. The blue line shows us volume, how much freight there is in the market. The white line shows us outbound tender rejections, how many contract carriers are rejecting those loads and therefore sending them to the spot market. And the green line, this shows us how many new carriers are entering the market at any given point. Now, of course, I'll attach all these charts below so you guys can examine them closer. But let's take a look. I'll zoom in a little bit right here. First of all, 2020, this is when COVID hits. Of course, volumes dip in December of 2019, but around 2020, the volumes are relatively normal. The amount of trucks is relatively normal and the tender rejections are, again, relatively normal. Now, somewhere in April, right here, April hits and this is when all the shutdowns begin to happen. Of course, when April hits and manufacturers, distribution centers, basically shippers and receivers start closing their doors, nothing is being shipped out. So the volume, the blue line right here, it drops. There is nothing going out. And of course, as the volume drops, the tender rejections drop with it. It drags those tender rejections down. And now we have a situation where there are more trucks in the market than there are loads available to move. So overcapacity, meaning that rates are now horrible in April of 2020. As we progress through 2020, especially after April, more and more states are requiring lockdowns, which means that people, consumers, they're forced to stay at home, restaurants, movie theaters, travel, that's all off the table because of those shutdowns. And on top of it, the government, in order to help those people who are now not able to go to work, they start sending out stimulus checks. And what does that do? Well, that increases the consumer's buying power. Now we have people in 2020 that are bored out of their minds. They can't spend their money on restaurants. They can't go and watch a movie. So what do they do? Well, they start online shopping. And as people start buying more and more tangible goods, we can see that the volume starts skyrocketing because tangible goods go on a truck. So trucks have something to transport to top it off. Tender rejections skyrocket, as you can see this white line and the capacity is still relatively normal, which means that there is more volume of loads than there are trucks in the market. So of course, rates start going up as well. During all of this time, the fuel prices and diesel prices are extremely low because people are stuck at home. They're not driving, they're not traveling. The law of supply and demand kicks in. And of course, diesel and fuel prices start plummeting down. So it's a really good time to be a carrier or an owner operator, a driver. Then we get to 2021 right here and everyone and their grandmother figures out that the trucking industry is an amazing place where you can make a ton of money. So this is where we see this green line. The new authorities start skyrocketing. Everyone is entering the trucking industry. But what happens in 2021 is that lockdowns start easing. 
restaurants start opening up, those entertainment facilities, travel, and on top of it, stimulus checks are drying up. People are still buying tangible goods, but they're also spending their income on things like services, things that don't go on a truck. Now, to top it off, while the volume is still okay, what starts happening is because of the increase in capacity, we have a situation where capacity is becoming more loose, Brokers and shippers are not as worried anymore about not being able to find a truck to move their load. And of course, rates start slowly going down. Now we fast forward to 2022 right here. The war in Ukraine starts right in February. The American consumer is losing confidence in the future of the economy. So they start kind of keeping their money safe in their pocket to top it off because of that war in Ukraine, diesel prices skyrocket. Now the consumer, because they lose confidence, all of a sudden they're not buying as much. So volume starts slowly trickling down. But the problem is, is that carriers are still entering the market. Do you see that green line? New carriers are still entering the market, hoping that they will make a killing. But what ends up happening is of course, overcapacity of trucks and a lack of volume to soak up some of that capacity and of course as we progress further diesel prices were going up capacity is still increasing volume is still decreasing because american consumers are either spending their money on services or kind of keeping their money safe because they're not sure what is going to happen next so currently we have a situation right here this is 2023 where there is an overcapacity of trucks and not enough loads to soak it up. Now, of course, this means that rates are crashing and contract carriers understand that they are going to get a better rate per mile with that contract freight. So they don't reject it as much. They don't have a better alternative on the load board. And whatever is being rejected, a minute amount, ends up on the spot market. But that is a tiny amount, which means that volumes on the spot market start crashing down. So just to reiterate now, this is us in 2023, the amount of new carriers that are entering the market did slow down. But in 2023, we have a situation where volumes are, they're not as high as they were, of course, but they remain relatively stable. But those contract carriers, because they do understand that they do not have a better alternative, they're holding on to that contract freight for dear life. So that means not as much is ending up on the load board and there are a ton of carriers so of course ton of trucks not enough loads the rates are going to plummet down so looking at this chart what needs to happen either the amount of carriers new carriers needs to plummet down no new carriers are entering the market existing carriers have to start shutting their doors it's a harsh truth i understand it but unfortunately this is what needs to happen because there's an overcapacity of trucks or volumes need to skyrocket to decrease that gap between the amount of trucks in the market and the amount of loads so here's a chart showing the national truck load index for line haul only this is the blue line this is only the spot rate without the fuel surcharge the white line is with fuel surcharge and currently, if we look, without fuel surcharge, we're at $1.65 per mile. Now, I'm going to read this to you. In 2021, the average cost per mile for carriers, according to the American Transportation Research Institute, was $1.85 per mile. But again, this was in 2021. Since then, fuel prices increased. Since then, inflation happened, the cost of maintenance increased, everything increased. So basically, the average cost of operating a truck is most likely higher than $1.85 per mile on average. And what does that mean? Well, it means that most carriers, the lucky ones, are turning a small profit. Most of them are breaking even and a good amount are actually losing money on each mile they drive. So this would lead you to think that more and more carriers would shut their doors, less and less carriers would enter the market. But I'm going to show you a chart from April 3rd. This is data from March 2023. And this is data by FTR Transportation Intelligence. You're not going to like it, but I think it's important to show you anyway. So here's the new for hire trucking companies who entered in the market as of March 2023. As you can see, we have been going down. And then in March 2023, 7,500 
new carriers entered the market. And the worst part is it's significantly higher than the other months. It's actually the highest since September of 2022. Now let's look at the next chart, net revocations of trucking authority. As you can see in March, they did decrease a little bit. If you look closely, they did decrease a little bit. Who is getting their authority revoked? And currently it's at 7,336. This is the net revocations. So if we look at the net change in carrier population, whether it increased or decreased, you can see that after one, two, three, four, five straight months of decreases in net carrier population, we finally have an increase. It's a small increase. It's only 142 new carriers if we take their revocations plus new authorities, but it's still an increase as of March, 2023. Why is this happening? Why are people still entering the market? Well, because diesel prices are still on their way down. Used truck prices are on the way down and people are believing that the market has finally bottomed out. Now, this is not the case. I thought it was, but it's not the case. It has not bottomed out quite yet. Now, something FTR also mentioned, which I found very interesting, these net increases might be because of California, specifically the AB5 law. So if we look at this chart right here, this is California's share of new carriers. Here it is at 12.4%. 12.4% of new carriers are California carriers. Why is this important? Well, because the AB5 law, what it does is it prevents owner operators from leasing onto carriers, right? So more and more of those owner operators are choosing to get their own authority to bypass that AB5 law because they do not want to be employees. So the increase in carriers might mean that there is actually not an increase in dispatchable trucks because those owner operators are simply switching to a carrier with their own authority. I hope that makes sense. But in either case, we can see that carriers are definitely not leaving the market as quickly as we would expect in the current market conditions. So to answer that question of when the market is going to get better, well, it's going to get better when that net carrier population plummets or the volumes skyrocket. When will that happen? Some people are saying quarter three of this year, but according to the CEO of ATBS, Todd Amen, his name is, this is probably based on historical data. He says, and I quote, difficult truck markets typically happen quickly and relatively deeply. We've already had this for almost a year. The worst case is usually 18 months, so we were assuming things will get a bit better by the third quarter of this year, but we have more pain before we get good, that's for sure. It's going to be another tough few months. So to put it plainly, the turnaround point is not set in stone. It's all based on assumptions. Now, we were all waiting for that produce season to drive those volumes up and hopefully soak up some of that capacity. The produce season was a beacon of hope for many carriers. But like I mentioned last month and showed you on Friday in the market update and forecast video, when we look at areas like Central California, Texas, Arizona, Florida, we can see that volume is stable. It is not going anywhere. And this is due to a ton of things, but most likely it's also due to the crazy weather, especially in California. Will produce season happen? Yes, of course it will. It just might be a little bit delayed and a little bit muted. I see a ton of comments under my videos, pointing fingers, playing the blame game. I am doing the same thing. It's the broker's fault. No, it's the shipper's fault. No, it's the carriers who take the low rates. It's their fault. Some people say it's my fault. And this is human nature and it's completely normal. We are trying to find someone to assign blame to so that we can at least try to make sense of the crazy situation we're in. The reality though, is that there is an oversupply of trucks and an undersupply of loads. This is something that the brokers use to their advantage and carriers are panicking, booking anything they can from the load board, whatever they can to make ends meet. Sometimes, not all of them, not realizing that they're actually losing money on every mile they drive. And this will become a domino effect. The more carriers take those bad loads, the more carriers don't understand their cost per mile and lose money on each load, the more of them will start shutting their doors. 
some of them will go and work for bigger carriers, therefore not reducing the number of dispatchable trucks in the market. Many of them will leave the industry completely, therefore reducing the amount of dispatchable trucks in the market. Sadly, a market correction is often a very slow and very painful process. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something new from this video. I'm sorry it wasn't as uplifting as I wish it could be, but you know what? I'm not here to sugarcoat it. I'm here to be transparent. This is what this channel is about. I'm here to be transparent, to give you the whole truth of what is going on in the market so you guys can better prepare. And of course, I try to do this in as positive of a way as possible. I smile a lot. I, I try to be you know, I, I try to be uplifting even in a bad situation. Anyway, guys, I am wishing you a wonderful rest of your week. Here's to the market, hopefully doing that turnaround sooner rather than later. And I will see you guys in the next video.